Mitch Lawrence, longtime NBA columnist, uh, host on Sirius XM Radio. He writes for uh, Forbes.com and the Sporting News. And he joins us now with a look at the brand-new champions. Sounds a little weird, Mitch. The Cleveland Cavaliers. How are you? I'm doing great. How about that? The Cleveland Cavaliers. Cleveland has a championship. How, how long do you think that party's going to go out there? Well, I'll tell you, uh, when the Phillies won here in 2008, it felt like it was a really, really long time. Add 30 years to them, and I think uh, that party will probably take them a little bit longer. Uh, It's very improbable, though, Mitch. I mean, uh, last week it looked like it wasn't going to happen, and all the narrative on LeBron was starting to roll in one direction. And then, as you write, last night changed it all. It it could have put LeBron on a different uh, stratosphere in just uh, less than a week. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I... I got to uh, give him a lot of credit. I mean, coming back from 3-1 uh, and basically in games 5 and 6, putting on, you know, scoring performances that are out of, you know, the past for him, uh, some real throwback games, and then what he did last night, he's got to move into the NBA's Mount Rushmore. I mean, you know, I hate to knock Will Chamberlain out of there because he holds 68 records, and we know he was just this Goliath of a player, and... uh Everything that he did, you know, rules were changed because of Will. But in terms of leading and winning and taking a team where he doesn't have any iconic players next to him like Wilt had. You know, Wilt and Philly had Hal Greer and he had Billy Cunningham and he had guys like, uh, you know, Jerry West and Elgin Baylor. LeBron's playing with Kyrie Irving, who's a kid from right around here up in North Jersey. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to rain on his parade, but he's not Isaiah (laughs) Thomas exactly. So what LeBron did in terms of getting to that third title, another finals MVP, making a historic comeback, two huge road wins, I think this, he's now deserving of a place on Mount Rushmore, along with Bill Russell and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Michael Jordan. And uh, I had a nudge, at least on mine, I had a nudge. <laughs> well, decide, I will say this, I'm not one of these guys who puts eight guys on the Mount Rushmore. I'm like, I look at the one out in wherever it is, South Dakota, and they got four guys up there. That's my Mount Rushmore. I got four guys for the NBA. And, and look, if you told me he's one of the four, I don't have a problem. If you told me he's just outside, I don't have a problem. But I wonder how much, you know, last night really nudged everybody in one direction or another because he was a transcendent talent. There's no question about that. But was he a transcendent winner? Did this series change the perception yes. of LeBron James, the winner? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the manner in which he came back, the historic comeback, uh, the fact, like I said, you look at his roster, what he's played with. Now, you know, people talk about what he played in Miami with Dwayne Wade. You know, Dwayne Wade is a – uh, he's not an iconic player. Yeah, in South Florida, he is Mr. South Florida. That's great and everything. He's about, to me, the fifth or sixth best shooting guard in the history of the NBA after Jordan, after Kobe, after Jerry West. After John Havlicek, I'll go back that far. You know, George Gervin's a guy who could be arguably better than Dwayne Wade, although he doesn't have any rings, just in terms of being a dominant scorer. So, I mean, you know, LeBron, yeah, LeBron in terms of winning and leading a team that is, you know, going against a 73-win team, you got to remember, Cleveland won 57 games. You know, they weren't favored at all in the series. They're the prohibitive underdogs. They're down 3-1, to one, and, of course, LeBron... What a what a just stroke of genius at the end of game uh, what was it game five, uh, game four where he baits Draymond Green that knucklehead into you know a suspension a move that cost Golden State probably the series if they have Draymond Green back home game five up three to one they're really losing to the Cleveland Cavaliers I don't think LeBron and Kyrie Irving are going for eighty two points I think they've probably already had their parade so that definitely changed the series we saw it happen in game six. With LeBron again, and, and look, keep in mind, the big change, I don't know if fans realize this, the big change this year is every game except for one in the finals. First time they've ever had two days off between games. You saw LeBron James have his legs last year, six games in 13 days in the finals. He ran out of gas. This year, game seven over 18 days was a huge hmm. boost for him in terms of, I also wrote about that for Forbes. That is a huge thing, and he can thank one man, Adam Silver, because Adam Silver decided We have got to get our finals in a situation where we're going to give players extra rest. We're going to see, we're going to have our product be the best it possibly can. And who does it favor? It favors the team with the better players. Because especially an aging superstar, now he's age, he's 31, he's played more minutes than anybody. But when you give LeBron James the extra day off, that 
gives Cleveland an advantage throughout. You know, if LeBron gets tired like we saw last year, all of a sudden the playing field is level. Didn't happen this year. He gets the extra rest. You saw how fresh he was. Now, last night he didn't shoot great, but down the stretch the fourth quarter, he dominated 11 points, the big chase down block in Iguodala. He made his free throws when he had to. He made a big three. You saw him. He was much more lively this year through a seven-game series than he was, and that's because he had this extra days off. Uh, Mitch Lawrence is with us, longtime NBA columnist. And, by the way, that block uh, happened in the 46th minute last night. So it was late, late, late in that game. And he yep. made it from half court to where he went in less than two well, seconds. Uh, th- I saw a little frame by frame. That was unbelievable. Yeah, that's you know what, when when he's when he's retired. When we think about LeBron James, I will think a lot about his chase down blocks and what he did. I mean, I remember a game. I was it was a regular season game. Miami was going to play the Knicks in a day or two, but they first uh, were at home against Sacramento. And at that time, I think Isaiah Thomas, who's now in Boston, was playing for the Kings. And Isaiah Thomas had a breakaway layup. And LeBron James, I swear, I was sitting courtside. He took about three steps from midcourt, and he swatted that shot against the glass. It caromed all the way out towards, like, midcourt. He walked by Isaiah Thomas. He said something. Later I found what he told Isaiah Thomas was, welcome to the NBA. (laughs) <laughs> I will think about LeBron James, that play, and chase down blocks like the huge one he did. And you're right, 46 minutes. Let's remember, LeBron had played more minutes than anybody going into last night's game. Mitch, okay? prior, Mitch prior to this series, okay, did yeah. you think of LeBron James, the Heat, or LeBron James, the Cav? Well, you know, I always thought about, I, I really thought about him where he had his greatest success. And that was Miami. And I, the only thing I, I didn't like about LeBron going to Miami wasn't the fact that he left Cleveland, because I would have left Cleveland too. It was just how he did it. But look, he had a problem. His first go-round in Cleveland, his first tour of duty, he could never get players to come. He could never engineer trades. They could never get the players he felt. And, you know, he kept on running into the Boston Celtics, and he kept on losing to the Boston Celtics. And he basically said this during a playoff series that I covered uh, where we, he talked about how the continual losing to Boston, he had to go, since he couldn't bring players to Cleveland, he had to go find a team. So that's where he had to hook up with Dwayne Wade. And so I think of him really more up till probably right now. Now I'll think of him more as a Cav. He goes home. I mean, it's an unbelievable story. Uh, like earlier today, he goes back to Akron. They're lining the streets near his house, and he, you know, he addresses the crowd, and he always says, I'm just an Akron kid, which is such a great story. And, you know, it's, it's marvelous for the area. It's marvelous for Cleveland. I know there are rumors now you're hearing he's going to L.A. I mean, why would he leave Cleveland? You're in the Eastern Conference. He's gonna, we already can pe- you can already pencil them in to go back to the finals. <laughs> uh, Mitch, you know, I, 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 at this point, I don't – it almost – he can't top what he did last night. I mean, it, it's like there's a period at the end of the sentence. Now he's just chasing – you know, to shut everybody up. I mean, he's got three at 31. Jordan had three at 31. If you even want to make those comparisons, now it's just, is he going to be able to catch those? Because I don't think there's anything else you can really make arguments for. But what about the other guy? What about Curry? I mean, what yeah. did this what did this series mean, uh, end up saying about him? I, I kind of compared him like this run. I keep kind of makes me think of like Steve Nash, where he just kind of came out of nowhere and became the best player for like this little run. What? did this series tell you, Mitch, about Curry? Well, something's wrong with Curry. I don't know if it's the knee or shoulder or whatever, but St- Stephen Curry did not shoot nearly. Now, is he injured or is he just running out of gas? He had never played, you know, he's never played this late in the June two years in a row. These games start piling up. Uh, you know, you got to be really tough and you got to be really physically able to endure it. Uh, I mean, that's just more, you know, that's why you got to really credit LeBron because he's not just a guy, you know, he makes six straight finals. He's producing all the time. Uh, Curry just had an atrocious series. I, I couldn't believe, first of all, his shot selection is mindless at points. I know it's great in a 73-win season, but you know what? you got to realize their four, they're last 14 playoff games, they're 7-7, seven and seven, so they're playing better competition. I was astounded how he was so sloppy with the ball and so cavalier with his attitude about passing. Last night we saw that ridiculous behind-the-back pass. I think this has to be a humbling experience for him. Um, I disagree on the Steve Nash thing. Steve Nash not even didn't even get to a Game 7 of a Western Conference Finals. 
this guy's going to be much better, is much better to me right now than Nash because they're different players. But right now, uh, look, Nash is one. Nash is a marvelous player in terms of he's a, a great passer. Uh, Steph Curry is the best long distance shooter the game has ever seen, and that comes from people like Jerry West, yeah. guys who've been around know much more than I do. But I've seen a lot of players, and uh, Reggie Miller, all these guys. I mean, so he's got that going for him. He's still very young. He's 26, 27 years old. Uh, the great thing for him is he can rebound from this. Uh, it's harder in the West. We know that. That's why these rumors about LeBron going west are ridiculous. Why would he do that? You stay in the Eastern Conference, but you know now. I think if you're Golden State, you really do have to go after Kevin Durant because you saw last night, for some reason, Curry's not playing well. Clay Thompson's not delivering. I thought he would based off the fact that he saved their season on the road in Game 6 in Oklahoma City, but he couldn't do much last night. And Harrison Barnes was awful. So, yeah, they, there's this whole thing about why would you break up a 73-win team because you, he didn't win the didn't, – it all went up in smoke. You didn't validate it. You didn't back it up. And now if you can get Kevin Durant – that could really help you out. Uh, Mitch Lawrence with it. And by the way, I wasn't saying they're comparable in terms of players. More that they uh, Nash just came out of nowhere and became the best player in well, the league all of a sudden. And Curry, it wasn't like people said, this is going to be the MVP when he was drafted. He right. kind of came out of nowhere and became the well, best player for this little two-year I, run. You wonder if that style of play has been, I don't want to say figured out, but you, you know that teams are not as – afraid of the way they play and will say, look, we're going to take it to you more. Like, Because it seemed like everybody tried to match what they were doing and Oklahoma City started it and Cleveland finished it by saying, nope, we're going to try to go big if we can. Well, and the other thing is, even when Cleveland wasn't big, they were physical. And you saw in the series, and, and Steve Kerr went off about it and you know got a $25,000 fine, he complained yep. very loudly Agreed. that Steph Curry, uh, it was not just the ticky-tack fouls, it's the other end of the court where Steph Curry you saw last night. He was actually giving up on plays, it looked like, as he's running the plays because he's getting bounced around like a pinball. And so uh, Cleveland at least figured him out. And a lot had to do with the referees letting it go, uh, which was good, I thought, as long as they let it go on both ends. But, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, they're still, you know, they, they won 67 games and they came back and won 73 yeah, they had this monumental collapse of going down in history 3-1. I don't think they should change the way they play. <laughs> you know, I think they want to keep doing what they're doing. But if you can add a Durant, maybe you can, you know, I don't know what else you can do. I mean, it's hard to say a team that lost, you know, nine games in the regular season should make changes. I would tend to say, though, uh, they have to get Curry right. Whatever happened out there, and maybe maybe we'll get an announcement in the next week or so that he's undergoing, you know, knee surgery. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. He moved fine. It's just he didn't shoot well. He didn't have his usual. He looked like something was on his mind or something. Well, the knee might be on your mind. Okay. You know, he might not have been able just to deal with that, and that's a shame. But you want know, to know something? I watched like everybody else that Sunday afternoon game in Houston, where he slipped on a puddle of sweat, and I said to myself, I even wrote about it for Forbes, saying, "Did this cost them the title?" Now, I'm not saying it did, but obviously he incurred an injury. It forced him to miss time. And he was not the same after that. And isn't that amazing how last year all we talked about how the Warriors are so lucky. They're playing depleted teams. Look the way they ended their season. No Andrew Bogut. Iguodala's got a bad back. And Steph Curry's not himself. How lucky were they this year? Mitch Lawrence. Uh, Mitch, you know, it was 2-0. It looked like the Cavs were overmatched. It looked like LeBron was going to have to go through the same stuff. He's not taking the ball to the basket. He's not aggressive. Yep. Yep. What was the turning point in the series that turned the light switch on for LeBron? I really think it was the Draymond Green incident, uh, where he got debated him into you know throwing his uh, you know punching him or trying to hit him in the in the groin area, getting suspended. And I think what happened, like I said before, LeBron, as the series went on, he still had a lot of gas in that tank with those two days off, and you know games five and six. I don't think anybody foresaw he would come out and shoot 56% overall in those two games and make 7 of 14 threes. He's just not that player. We haven't seen a great shooting LeBron or even a good shooting LeBron since my, you know, in terms of his perimeter game since his Miami days. And so that was the big thing. And, you know, once it got to game seven, I figured the way he was playing and the way Golden State was playing – I gave Cleveland a real good shot last night because I don't care if you're playing in Oakland. It doesn't really matter. It's just the way the teams are playing. And he was in, coming in with a full head of steam. And, of course, let's not forget, I mean, Kyrie Irving played 
they had the two best players in the series because Kyrie Irving was better than Curry, too. Uh, Mitch Lawrence, great stuff. Uh, Forbes.com, uh, you can read him over there, Sirius XM NBA Radio, some uh, sporting news. He's all over on the NBA for a long time. Always enjoy reading your stuff, Mitch. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me 